What is new is is this week and get an opportunity to to get ready for Washington State and uh, you know you talk to the group today and and uh, you know I think every week you got to find ways that you can improve and certainly you know from week one to week two there's uh, there's a lot that, that we can improve upon and, and yet like I told you afterwards I liked a lot of what we did I thought the the effort and the way they Went about things was good, and, and you, you look at the film, and, and each each individual, each group, you know, us as a team, there's areas where we can uh, need to get better and can get better, and uh, doing against a, a good opponent. So, need to have a good week of preparation, and, and looking forward to that. We can flag one down, Jeff. Paul, I know Jim played a lot of safeties uh, in week one. I think at least six, but a couple guys that. We haven't seen um, Latu. What did you see from him? And also Toller in his first action in, in a couple of years. What did you see from those guys when you review how they played? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, – they kind of showed up. You know, Titus had a nice fit on the one run, and Moy showed up a number th number of times and, and also you know, in, the, in the run game and, and in the pass game made a good play. And, heck, you saw him on special teams. Oh, Preston, Zachman, you know, hadn't played um, – it was good, and, and and so it was, uh, you know, certainly with Torch. Even Torch, you know, it's a new role for him, you know, and he was the guy that last year uh, came in and, and certainly made an impact, but but they've all kind of got a new role. And uh, but I think like the way it started, and, and certainly, like you kind of said with the whole group, you know, there's areas we got to keep, keep, keep growing. Paul, uh, you mentioned that you like the pass protection on Saturday. How would you assess how Jack Nelson played his first game at left tackle? Yeah, I thought that, uh, you know, certainly, you know, it's going to be like every guy. I mean, there's some really, there's some good. And and it's a, it's a different feel. And certainly he's had, you know, spring ball and fall camp. But it's, um, you know, you continually – going to improve with play I think you know and same thing I thought you know Beecher you know moving inside you know did some good stuff and and yet we all got to keep keep going but I thought you know Nelly was good on a, a number of plays and there's some things that he can certainly work on this week. Paul you know Jim you guys held out a couple of your corners Alexander Smith and Clark who had been banged up right they're not on the status report this week it is would you have to see how they perform in practice to make sure they're sound, or have you seen them practice already? I think we'll be able to find out more this week, you know, particularly with Justin, you know, and, and um, kind of where he's at. It's been going well for him, and yet, um, you know, getting a good tomorrow, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday practice out of him, um, then I think, you know, we're, we're optimistic, certainly, but you, you got to, we're going to need those practice days. Paul, with, Hayden Rucci having his first couple of collegiate receptions uh, with, in his fourth year. Just how have you seen him evolve as a player, but also, in, in, you know, as a potential pass catcher within this offense? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, credit to him, you know, for the work he's he's put in. And, um, you know, I think that he's, he's like a lot of our guys, you know, that they need to be, you know, those situations he was in. And I thought Graham made good decision on it. And, and then they've got to be able to deliver, you know, in the passing game as, as much as in the run game. And I think that whole tight end group is is one that we feel good about. They just got to continue to play, you know, and gain that experience. And I know they've been in game situations, but they just got to continue. Their, their role's a little bit different now, and, and they got to keep, keep growing. Paul, I just wanted to get, get your thoughts on your inside linebackers, Muma and, and, and Jordan, and what, what did they show you? And what stood out about them uh, last week? Yeah, I thought that uh, I thought they, sh you know, you, you felt them, you know, and they showed up. I thought they uh, number of plays where they, you know, believed what they saw and, and triggered on it, and, and I thought made some really impactful plays, and uh, you know that was good to see. You know that they're uh, trusting themselves and, and trusting what they're seeing and. I thought they played fast, you know, and, and uh, so that was a good f first game for both of them. Paul, kind of a two-parter for you on, on the backup quarterback situation. Um, with Miles, do you try to get him a little 
a few more extra reps during the week compared to what you would give Chase, who's been around this program for a while? You know, uh, ideally you'd like to, you know, we're talking about because Miles and you still want to get Deacon some, but you still got to start, I think, with Graham, you know, and making sure that he, he's got the, the, the right amount of uh, reps and the, and the looks that he needs to see. And, uh, and so I think that maybe a couple more and, and yet, you know, like Chase was so good at when we were doing, you know, anything where we go like our second offense versus our one defense, Chase found a way to really make those good reps for him. And I think that, you know, the young guys are learning to do that. You know, so you felt like Chase was ahead a little bit when he's going into game week preparation. But I think you still got to make sure that, that you kind of start from the top down. You got to make sure that we're getting what we need from Graham. And then certainly you, you got to get then the other guys the reps. So my follow-up would be how much, how important is it for them to do work away from the practice field, like in the meeting oh, room? Like big. How, how, how do you get a guy ready yeah. that way? Well, I mean, they've been going. I think it's just trying to um, reinforce what they know and, and go through it. And that's where it's been nice. You know, school doesn't start quite yet, and that, that's been helpful with the, with the time, the extra time that you can have. And, um, you know, credit to Chase. Chase is taking them, you know, when we're busy. You know, he's grabbing them. And, and then there's some parts where you just got to gotta do it on your own. But you got to make sure that they're studying it and learning it the right way. And so – Absolutely, you know, time away, and, and like I said, you know, school doesn't start for a couple of days, and, and there is there is time for them to do that. Just with Wooler, any timetable, any estimate on just how long he might be out for? Yeah, you know, um, don't know for sure, but I think it'll be a, a bit of time, you know, and, and hate to see that, and um, actually did it, I think, a, a play before, but uh, it'll be a, it'll be a bit. I have another question for you about Miles. It's not very often that a true freshman quarterback uh, plays, especially this early in the season. Obviously, there's circumstances because of that. But what is it about Miles' skill set that stands out to you? Um, what is it that you like about his ability? Yeah, I think you know I've liked the way that he's kind of come in and you know came early and and uh, and he's always trying to learn. You, you know, and and even when. Uh, you know, there's times when I know he's not getting the reps, but I know he's he's working at it, and you see it even on the on the side sometimes in practice. You know, kind of going through it, and and you know certainly all those guys who feel like they've got a skill set, you know, a talent with them. But I've liked the way that he's approached it, and he's got um, kind of his demeanor's been good too. You know, I think it's he's got kind of had the right balance there, and I think he's certainly got some urgency to him but also uh, level-headed enough where it doesn't get too big. Coach, Nakia Watson had a solid performance last weekend for Washington State. With him coming back here this weekend, what kind of threat does he present and what type of player was he when he was here at Wisconsin? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, uh, I like Nakia and appreciate uh, when he was here and, and, and being around him. And, and, you know, the threat that he poses is he's – part of a good offense that our defense has to stop, you know, and it's not about uh, Nakia, you know, and he's got, he's got teammates here that, that know him well and, and, and certainly appreciate him. We, guys, we all liked having him on this team, but, um, you know, it's, it's Wisconsin versus Washington State and he's, he's their back. And, and so I think it's the whole unit that we got to defend, not just get caught up in, in one, one person. Paul, I know this was a couple of months ago, but you and uh, the running back group were able to go to Gary Brown's uh, celebration of life back in June. Just what was that experience like, having that whole group together and getting able to being able to do that? Yeah, it was uh, it was it was certainly a powerful day. Um, I was glad to be able to share. You know, I think we're all glad to be with each other, and uh, kind of the. You know, the whole process hit us all differently, probably, but significantly. And and even the, you know, the celebration of life was, you know, well after, you know, it wasn't that weekend. It wasn't, you know, shortly after. And uh, it was something that I think we were all 
felt fortunate to be able to do. But when we say that, we know that none of us wanted to be there. But it was uh, it was a good tough day. Paul, I know I know Ches didn't get a lot of carries Saturday night, but I'm just curious if you saw whether it was him being decisive, confident in the knee. Did you see the same runner in, on Saturday that you saw in camp as he was progressing from that injury? Yeah, I thought, you know, heck, even – and we talked about that a little bit. You know, just we didn't have a, a ton of plays. It was a different rhythm to that game. But uh, I don't think I'm imagining this. I thought he ran really well and hard and and did see that in camp. You know, so it wasn't – what what he did the other day it wasn't geez he's been holding back or you know it was it's been consistent I've loved the way that he's approached really from the first day of camp you know and certainly the summer and it was hard for him in the spring not being able to go but I thought that he uh, he just continues to to work and and I thought he ran really well I thought he, you know what at times I think a, a back can get to where. You try to create. So I thought he was. Pay I thought he had a decent balance of that patience, but then uh, thought he ran, ran behind his pads, and and it was, uh, it was fun to see. He had some good tough yards and yards after contact. It was, I, it was good. And and I mean, you look at it, and you know, I don't think any of the backs really got a ton of uh, carries. We didn't have a ton of plays. Paul, is there any difference preparing for? Washington State, a Power Five team, as opposed to Illinois State, an FCS team. <clears throat> Not what you're saying as far as uh, where they're from. I mean, the, the the common part is that you're preparing for a game, and there's I think there's steps that you've got to take, and and I think that we all, you know, these game opportunities are limited, and we've always believed that you got to how do you maximize it and. And what can't change is your respect for the game and your respect for the opponent and the respect for the work that has to be done to get yourself ready to play. And so uh, in, in that regard, I don't care who you're playing. Um, you think about it, you gotta, you got to try to focus on the things that you can impact or you can control. And we can control our preparation. What's different is, you know, it's a different style of offense. It's, it's different defense. You know, there, each week there's going to be differences um, and then each week there's got to be some of the same uh, common themes, and it's we're preparing for an opportunity, and you know we're talking about it right now, and we've talked we'll talk about it every every game. You know the, the games aren't guaranteed for for players. We got a schedule, but uh, you want to be able to make the most of of the opportunities you get, and uh, we got one coming up this Saturday against a really good team, and and how do you? maximize that it's it's in your preparation and you're preparing heck we're focusing in this weekend but you're preparing all year for these game opportunities and we've got guys you know that didn't get to play in the first game we spend every monday when we're talking about the, who, who's going to go who's not going to go you know when you get a chance to go and you get a chance to play this game it is there's nothing better and so the way you prepare is it's the most important thing going Torchio obviously had that big play Saturday. I was just wondering, during the offseason, what did you see in him in terms of the way he was able to kind of lead that safety group? And what's the biggest way in which he's kind of grown over the last year to kind of accept this bigger role this year? I think one of the things I, I really like and admire and about Torch is, Torch is he's consistent of who he is. You know, he didn't all of a sudden try to – flip a switch and say, all right, I'm the oldest safety in the, in this room. I'm going to become this person, you know, and, and I think he's – and guys respect that, and the guys certainly respect him. And I think they respect him because he's consistent with who he is. And um, he's always been a good teammate. And he's always been locked in, and he's smart, and he'll communicate. And um, But, you know, it's not like – uh, and, and I appreciate the fact that he didn't try to – I mean, he's aware of it. He's going to help whoever needs the help when they need the help. And he's also going to take coaching and, and take assistance. He doesn't think he's got all the answers either. But Torch is going to stay Torch, and, and uh, I think that's good for that room. Jeff, kind of a follow-up on Torchio. How would you describe the way he plays 
pass coverage in it. I don't want to say that he baits the quarterback into throwing, but there's been a couple times where he's really, it looks like he really reads it well and anticipates where that ball is going to go, like last year, Purdue, and then Saturday night. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, I think he's, you know what it looks like to me, and, and I think that's credit to, to Torch for taking the coaching, but uh, truly playing the position. You know, when he's out there, I think he's playing football. He's not, uh, he understands what we're trying to do. Uh, with with a with a in our within our defense, I think he also understands what offenses are trying to do, which then allows him to play. And, you know, and so it, when I watch him, it, it, it to me it looks like he's playing it. Um, he's thinking. You know, I'm not saying it's easy, but he's he's playing the game, and I think he's, that's a credit to the. You know, he's taken the coaching, but applying it and that's what's pretty that's what's been fun to see.